In downtown Mount Pleasant, among the coffee shops and hair salons, you'll find a little store by the name of For Art's Sake. At first glance, you'd see the shop's storefront filled with homemade crafts and art being sold by local artists. But For Art's Sake is more than just a storefront. Um, we have a maker space and it has materials like pom-poms and hot glue and paint and ceramics and things. We have a boutique area where um, we have over 70 artists now selling their artwork. So that's an amazing collaboration of creative minds working together. We have permanent jewelry, um, a splatter paint room, which we call process art because it's really just the fun of making it, not necessarily the end result. We have a rage room for people that just don't do art at all, but we want them to be included in our really cool space. That's Megan Baer, the co-owner and operator of For Art's Sake. She started selling her and others' artwork in the restaurant her and her husband owned. But unfortunately, their restaurant closed down during the pandemic. I needed a new home to sell the artwork because it was so fun and community involved and wanted to make sure it continued. So I found the New Yorker here in downtown Mount Pleasant and um, kind of took over the space. And it's been just a growing wild adventure every day since then. For art's sake is kind of a, it, for art's sake to us means for the sake of art, for creative art, for appreciating art, for um, making your own, all ages and abilities. So with that, we've included lots of opportunity for all the skilled levels to create. Another way for art's sake makes art accessible to the community is through their donation program. So we collect donated creative materials and our loft has turned into the $5 fill a bag fiber art loft, which means you can fill a bag for $5 of yarn, fabric, string, crochet hooks, all of the tools that you might need to either start a new hobby or start a new project. Um, and it, to me, it, it's more encouraging to start a new hobby or learn new things if it's a little bit more affordable. So the donations and this loft space has allowed us to do that. Allowing people to have a creative outlet um, for all ages. We have paint and sips, bring your own alcohol. We have summer camp for kids where we do um, creative projects and science projects and volcanoes erupting and we, we do all the things. And I think having a space where people can let loose and make a mess if they want to is really, really necessary. Bear says co-owning and running a small business has its challenges, but it also has its rewards. Um, we had this customer come in and it was so awesome. She hadn't been in before. She was a new person and came in the door and she goes, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. It was, she was so excited about what we had. It was awesome. Yeah, that is Every day shows its own version of difficulties. Um, sometimes it's finding time to do all the things that you want to do. Um, for me, I have all of these grand ideas and plans, um, and there's just never enough time in the day. Um, I found my people, and there's so many wonderful people who are so supportive of For Art's Sake. As a small business, numbers are not fun. <laughs> the heat bill's not fun. That's always a challenge. Um, but I take it as a creative challenge. What can I do this month to, to be better or be different or grow more and bring more people in? When it comes to the holidays, Bear says it's all about helping the artists sell their products for the season. The holidays, my goal is to help the other artists sell their work. So I do maybe more marketing or more involvement in our community events um, to make sure that we are seen and, and heard. So I think for art's sake, it's its, it's its own world. And it has grown that way from three artists when we first opened to 70. And all, like I said, all of these creative minds, we have rainbow stairs and a spot to smash stuff. For art's sake is its own world. Reporting from downtown Mount Pleasant, I'm Kylie Shapansky.